I'm Ting Sin Vets. We're talking about investing, finance, and professional development for today's episode only. Ben's going to talk today will be theme to ETH. First, I want to say happy Tuesday, everybody. Have a great week so far. Respect to recording time of 9 10 a.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum current trading $4,806, down about 0.12% so far. On the overall crypto market, beside Cardano, which seems like it's coming true with respect to the surging pressure because of the downward wedge that we've been forming so far, it seems like it confirmed it. And as we broke above the 201 level that we've been kind of hovering, trying to struggle around like the 186 to the one to the 201 level. And as we get confirmation on this signal, um, one whale have decided to buy in and subsequently a lot of retail and public investors chased in and currently we're up close to about 10% so far right if you could see prominently we see this downward wedge at the same time we form a preliminary golden cross and at the same time we were depleted on the RSI right so this is just technical confirming and coming true in realization based on what we've been talking about so far right so Cardano was you know, out of all of the other coins was the more bullish one. And in terms of the risk management profile perspective, also the most favorable as well. So with respect to Ethereum, let's just go back to the real topic. Uh, you can see that we're basically 30 bucks away from all time high that we've tested yesterday at the 4,844.44. Wow, a lot of force. And Bitcoin right now just uh, trading around like the 68,000, basically, you know, a little bit away from you know, basically $500 away from the all-time high that we tested yesterday. And Bitcoin is extremely bullish right now. Uh, you can see that we form a golden cross. However, we still overbought 70 out of 70. So um, I think breaking to the 70,000 would not be surprising to me. And I think because of the fact we just formed it recently, we could technically be leaping up from there and um, from some sort of like a baseball. You know, when you throw a baseball upward, you kind of have to have that inertia for us to hit that apex. So technically, if we see like 85,000 or even close to 10,000 by the end of this year, if the momentum sustains, wouldn't be would not be surprising at all to me based on how it's set up right now. So with respect to the news, let's just look at the Ethereum news real quick, which is typically what we do every single day. So Decrypt 13 minutes ago talked about Ripple, uh, XRP if you may, to launch Bitcoin Ethereum Hub, plans DeFi offering. So this is great. Uh, it seems like they are expanding the value proposition in addition to just Ripple offering XRP. They are also offering the key coins, right? Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is something we appreciate, uh, more adoptions and more commercializations for these uh, respective assets. The next one talking about with Decrypt again, one hour ago, talk about Ethereum named service hits $5.4 billion in diluted valuation after ENS airdrop. So it seems like there is more uh, venture companies starting around the value proposition of Ethereum, and this one's called Ethereum Name Service. So it's very, very bland. I would say the name is not really, they don't even try to be a little bit unique or have some sort of um, unique characterization about it. They just kind of use the name for itself, uh, Ethereum Name Service. Uh, but they did demand of $5.4 billion in dilute valuation based on this uh, recent funding round that they have cultivated so far and then the next one's on decrypt two hours ago talk about discord ceo teases integration with ethan wall and metamask so this is uh something that we have heard from jason citron um on a screenshot that he has on twitter last night and this is basically kind of like a tease right it's not really true he's basically foreshadowing something it might be a, a rumor that he's trying to cultivate. He might, he probably just want to gauge people's interest to see if this is makes this is like a logical integration for their current value proposition. Um, so nothing that we can use this as a confirmatory signal yet. But we typically want to buy the rumor, sell the news type of affectation. So I would not be surprised um, if they actually. As we they talk more about it, it become true over time. So something to look out for, I guess. And then next one's on decrypt again. So decrypt just like pumping stories this morning. Developer behind Ethereum Solana bridges races forty million in token sales. 
So it just seems like um, Solana is um, and you know is basically riding the wave of uh, you know I guess Ethereum, which is you know the 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 starter of this altcoin ecosystem, and it seems like Solana is slowly catching up in the ecosystem, stealing the spotlight oh, slowly. Um, so I think Solana can be a good hedge, which you know also demands why we've been searching so prominently so far, right? And then the next one is talking about Bitcoin. It's three hours ago, talk about Ethereum surges past 48,000 to new all-time high, which is the level we're at right now. And uh, several analysts on Wall Street are saying that brace for further upsides. I think that makes sense because of the fact that despite being overbought, right, um, Bitcoin has formed a golden cross, right? So when what that means is that we're going to see more surging pressure and it's going to drag up the whole market, not just for Ethereum itself, right? I think by itself, Ethereum is not like the most... Um, you know, favorable setup at the moment, but Bitcoin is going to be supporting that. So we'll see how that goes. And, like, and the next one on CNBC five hours ago, talk about Singapore central bank warns against crypto, says that retail investors risk significant losses. Um, so this is uh, coming from the signage for the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is also called MAS. Um, they are, I mean, we get it. It's not like they're. I think the verbiage might be a little bit too. Um, how would you say media affectation? Uh, it's significant losses, right? I think obviously we have there's risk in in crypto assets, right? Um, and I think they are just um, you know their intention is not to scare people away, but their intention is to um, you know bring awareness that. There is still a lack there of with respect to cybersecurity or compliance or regulatory infrastructure that, you know, um, they do not wish that retail investors, you know, would lose money because of investing into platforms that are, you know, relatively still, um, you know, there's still room to, to be improved on, right? So in just a percentage perspective, as we get further adoption, there is going to be some percentage of the people that's going to be vulnerable or get hacked because of, I don't know, IP address get hacked. Well, just like I, I'm not like a coding or like a side cybersecurity or IT guy, but I think it's something that because of the further adoption and, you know, they play, you know, the legal system is basically playing catch up <clears throat> that, you know, um, cautioning people, it makes total sense logically. And then that's um, that's pretty much it on the news front. Uh, and then the other news are really just repeating what we have already talked about in the previous news. So they are just basically um, reinforcing uh, from various different media application platform. So right now we are surging to $4,803, um, down about 0.20%, trading us off 9.18 a.m. on the Eastern time. Right now, we are sustaining. We see that we've been sustained at the overbought level for quite some time now, ever since basically the beginning of October, all the way to now, right? And we've basically been sustaining overbought for one whole month, which makes sense, right? We've been levitating upward. So right now, the risk is not in really in our favor to buy in at the moment, but it's definitely great for you guys to be holding. I think it makes sense to keep holding because I do see some more upside potential based on how the Bitcoin is set up right now. So let's take a look at Bitcoin right now. Yeah, it's absolutely golden. You could see there's a golden cross that's formed. We are 68 out of 90, 70. But technically, if we're going to keep leaping up to like, let's say history is going to repeat itself, we're going to hit like to the, the scale of 92 out of 70 with a lot more room to run up to for Bitcoin. Right, and I think the golden cross could technically form it, right? So that's something that we appreciate. So I will probably hold and not sell so much yet. But if you want to sell and secure profit, that's okay too. It's up to your risk aversion. Dogecoin right now is, uh, I would say, it's bullish as well. We're slowly forming a golden cross. We're fusing together, and I think the next level that we technically leap up to would be somewhere around like the. We get canceled out at the thirty first, obviously, because it's a flat number. But can we search all the way to the next level to the next, like literally would be 35 cents, right? And that's a relatively large search. And I think going to 30 would be logical based on how the setup is right now. Cardano is a, yeah, definitely. It's, it's um, 
it's very, very bullish right now because of the golden cross that we have talked about. And at the same time, we're relatively depleted, right? We were at the level of, again, right? At the RSI scale of like 38, 34, right? So we were forming a downward wedge, right? So, and I've been saying this many times in my last five videos that, you know, the setup for Cardano in the risk versus reward ratio was relatively prominent. And right now, the next level that we should technically leap up to would be the current level. We are testing it right now. And the, after this level, we have to get to would potentially be the 250. So um, I don't know how likely can we get there. So maybe take a little bit profit today would not be a bad idea, actually. Because uh, you're either betting that we go up to the 250 or come back down. And I think 250 would be it. Um, if we even have more bullishness, I think two. We might touch 275 for like a brief second, but three dollars that could be a stretch because um you need to have some consolidation to build new platforms before we keep leaping up. You can't just build a building straight up. You know what I'm trying to say. Solano right now is selling off. We are this is relatively bearish right now. We're forming a well back and at the same time 65 of 70. So I think ideally is buying at somewhere down below. Or wait until we cool back down or maybe take some profit right now would not be a bad idea to be back to like the 130 to 113 would be much more logical as we deplete back to the 35 on the rsi scale xrp right now uh it's basically hovering right struggling to 130 or 120 or 110 with 62 out of 13 70 right now um so and you can see that we got cancelled out so many times on the 130 level so i think ideally Buying the dip at 120 as we get there. If we break 120, you know, I wouldn't go crazy on 120, but if we break 120, we're gonna go back to 110 and I'll slip from there. And I think 110 is a safer bet because of more consolidation levels. Polkadot right now is, um, mm, Polkadot is very bearish. It's the exact opposite of Cardano right now. You can see that we're forming a death cross slowly with the overbought. So ideally waiting until 42, ideally waiting for 33, to 25 would be much more logical. So card Polkadot is not the buy right now. It's not a good setup at all. Algorand is um Algorand is just uh you know struggling to go above two dollars, right? And I think right now we have propensity to back down. So ideally wait until 160 to 152 would be much more logical. Shiba Inu right now is just being being stubborn, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, it was just we, which is funny because Shiba Inu, uh, the dog itself is quite stubborn as well, um, and we had the fifty five out of seventy. So um, I think ideally wait for it to cool back down to the two five two seven nine three to the nine hundred would be much more logical. With respect to risk management levels, uh, these are the risk management levels that I've identified as we deplete back to below thirty five on the RSI scale as we deplete to the preliminary golden cross that we've seen. On respectively for Cardano, right, that we've been mentioning for the last five, six videos so far, that uh, these are levels that I would feel more comfortable incurring risks. Right now, it's just about um, being patient and watch on a sideline because, like, it's always it's okay to not do anything. It's sometimes you don't need to do anything and just let it go, let it ride for itself, right? Um, so hopefully this is helpful. Really appreciate you for dropping by this Tuesday again. Uh, feel free to give me a shout if you have any questions and stay tuned for this call. Take care. Bye.